Yesterday was a long day. I don't know when we're going to go abroad again. Kevin Clark joins us, uh, F1 enthusiast, also covers football, but we're going to just do F1 because it is over. Max Verstappen, your world champion, his first ever uh, Yos Verstappen, his father, in attendance immediately with the hoodie and a lot of controversy. Imagine this. If you didn't watch the race or you don't watch F1, and thank God I've been watching this season for me to be even be able to make sense of what happened, and even then I'm not 100% sure. But imagine if you're watching football for the first time ever. It's the Super Bowl, and a team's down 21 points, and the other team's driving, and then all of a sudden the people in charge of the rules were like, this drive is worth 22 points, and then the team <laughs> scores, and the other team's like, wait, they just won the Super Bowl? That's a little exaggeration, a, b- a bit of what happened. But Verstappen wins. And just to run through a quick timeline of events, so if you watch the race, play along with us. If you didn't, this is why we're trying to do this, Kevin, and then we'll let you jump in. Um, sure. Max has pole at Abu Dhabi, the last race. They're even in points. You know, whoever finishes ahead of the other guy, again, with the fastest lap being a potential uh, issue in there, uh, is going to win a world championship. And Lewis is going for his eighth straight here. Hamilton jumps. Max at the start. This is the second week in a row. Max had a bad start where Hamilton got him. Um, That was on a restart on the previous race, not at the beginning. And then Max got inside and obviously broke late, kind of pushed Hamilton out. Hamilton goes off. And I think to avoid a crash, because Max is capable of anything, especially at this point, Hamilton, I thought, gained a massive advantage by going off the track and then was just ahead of Max. And then Christian Horner, the principal at Red Bull, which is basically the coach, um, goes to Mike Massey, who's in charge of race command. And it's like, look, what you got to give that back. You need to give that space back. And they're like, no, actually, he didn't gain any kind of advantage, which none of us could believe. But we thought perhaps that maybe that was in reaction to the way that Verstappen has raced lately and that they were just like, whatever, Max probably was so, or Lewis was so worried about Max, they went ahead and did that. But that in itself ended up becoming a major part of this. Max being behind Hamilton allowed him to make pit decisions when he wanted to make it. And it looked like even Hamilton was going to run away with this, but then Max gets the extra pit advantage, gets the fresher tires, but it still doesn't look like it's going to happen. And the Latifi, Williams, crashes on lap 52 of 58 Fresher tires for Max. We're thinking there's a chance. Nope, there's not going to be a chance because the safety car is still out. We've got five cars between Lewis and Max, and we don't let those cars through. And if we do let those cars through and pass the safety car to just have it be Lewis and Max, then you have to then wait until a lap after uh, the safety car comes off. Then the race would have been over. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, race command says, not only are we going to let the cars through, we're going to pull the safety car. We're going to give ourselves one lap for the entire thing. And because Max had much fresher tires, Lewis had no chance. And Max goes from driving around an hour and a half being like, I have no chance at this to winning a world championship. So I had to recap that so everybody understood. So there we go, Kevin. So I thought about the analogies. There's no perfect NFL analogy or American sports analogy to what happened. The closest thing to me, it wouldn't be the 22 point touchdown. It'd be more like the Super Bowl. They got to drive 95 yards and there's an 80 yard spot foul. That's kind of the the ref's interpretation of the rules. Like that, that, that to me is more analogous, where it's like you're really just putting a team in position to win and really determining the championship. Um, I, I read and listened to basically every pundit this morning uh, and last night, and I couldn't find one person who was like, oh, no, this was this was the right decision. It was clearly the interpretation of the rules by Michael Massey, who's had a disaster of a season already. Uh, so he is basically, he does uh, like like a million things. Um, he's uh, the F1 technical department head. He's the safety delegate. And he's also in charge of this stuff. And all year long, people have said Massey's lost control of the season. A lot of that is because there was a really contentious title race where Max Verstappen was clearly, um, and Lewis too, uh, more comfortable crashing than giving an inch. We've talked about that over and over again here on Going Abroad, um, where these guys were, were going to go out on their shield. And Massey hasn't been up for it. Uh, I believe going into this race, Fernando Alonso said that Massey was, quote, too soft. Um, and so... When 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 something like this happens and and he basically gets to determine the championship, he got bullied, um, and 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 we've seen that time and time again. So um, it was fascinating to see that. For me, I think that there are, you know, I, this was I, Lewis said at the end he thought it was manufactured, right? Um, that was over the radio. There were a couple other drivers who who basically said that um, that this was manufactured for drama, and and I agree. Um, whether or not that's a good thing. Uh, I, for the fans, I'll kind of leave that open to interpretation, but I would say that there is no explanation 
to letting them race one one lap for the championship other than it looked cool. Like, you know that Twitter meme that goes around every time there's a cool catch that gets disallowed? Everybody says, hey, wouldn't it be cool that if something was so cool, we just let it stand? It's kind of what Michael Massey did. He let them race when they shouldn't have for one lap because it looked really, really, really cool. And he determined the championship because of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a better way of putting it because, you know, I was trying to, sit there and figure out like if I had only just begun watching yeah. I would have I would have been like I don't know if that was my first race Kevin I would have gone what is this like it was <laughs> exciting but this doesn't make any sense and I wouldn't have understood it for months so luckily you know I've been watching off and on all season here and getting a sense of what's happening but I'm still not understanding the rules there was a protest by Mercedes that was ruled on there was two separate protests by Mercedes based on what I read and then they were both decided four hours later I mean it's unbelievable that we have the access to this imagine having Belichick or anybody mic'd up during a huge disagreement on a final drive in yeah. the Super Bowl, and then we get to consume it that way because Horner's screaming at Massey to say, get those cars out of there and give Max you know, a chance to chase down Lewis. But again, the rules were that if you were going to let those cars go ahead and then you take the safety car off, you can't right. do it all until like a lap later, then that would have been the end of the race. So he the commentators the are like, well, it's better. Yeah. Right. So this way you're saying and the commentators were on it here where they're like, well, they can't move the cars out because if they do, then the race will be over. So at least this way, Max has some kind of chance, but he's going to have to get through five cars to even get to Lewis. And even with the faster tires, like with a lap to go, there's no way that's going to happen either. It, so this thing's entirely over. So that's how you're consuming it as a viewer. And then out of nowhere, they're like, oh, they're moving the cars and we're racing and we're racing. And you're listening to Horner yell at him. And then as Toto's watching this, Toto Wolf was the principal for Mercedes. He's going like, you've got to be kidding me. And he's screaming and we're hearing it as it's happening. No, no, Michael. No, no. You need to add another. You can't do the restart. Great radio. And then Massey, who I couldn't, and I couldn't tell if Massey was being defiant or if it was his insecurity yeah. where he's like, it's a motor race, Toto. It's a motor we're race. We're going racing. We're racing. And you're like, okay, yeah. Yeah. Like, all right. I guess we're going racing. But it just felt like as exciting as it was and, you know, realizing that Max actually had this massive advantage because he didn't get the place back from Hamilton on that first corner. Yeah. Like this was as crazy a finish and people that have done this for decades are like, this is the craziest season, the craziest finish. Yeah. It had to be these two guys. It almost felt like it was a script that Massey wrote that he was like, yeah, somebody picked it up. He felt, I think Michael Massey thought he was the main character of the race. Like, I feel like he's probably been under so much pressure. Imagine if there was one referee in all of football who made all the catch decisions and all the taunting decisions and all the quarterback hit decisions. It was one guy sitting in an office, okay? Imagine that, and then you're getting so much pressure, and then Michael Massey, at the end of the race, in the best season in, in decades, said, you know, you know what time it is? It's Michael Massey time. It is Michael Massey time, and hundreds of millions of people are watching Michael Massey time right now. That, that's what it looked like to me. And again, that's fine. We have ump shows all the time in Major League Baseball. That's what sometimes these guys who call balls and strikes, that's what they want to do. That's why they got into the business. Now, there were a couple people, Brundle said this after the race, they got to break up Massey's job because he's doing too much. I mean, it, it, it's it, he's doing like five different jobs. There should be a full-time race guy who just makes these decisions. Um, Damon Hill... A uh, longtime driver said he thought that the Red Bull was playing rough with Massey and probably right. Like, something we've talked about. The reason you lobby the refs over a seven game series is because at some point in the game seven, someone's going to be driving to the line and you're going to get a call because for six games before this, you've been complaining about, hey, watch what the power forward does here. Watch what the center does here. You've been complaining for six games, and in the seventh game with, with 30 seconds to go, you get the foul call. That's why you lobby the refs. Red Bull won. Now, as far as just like you know, excitement, like this is certainly since I started watching, what, four or five seasons ago, this is the best. You know, people talk about 2008 when Hamilton had to go from sixth to fifth in the final lap past Timo Glock and, uh, and, and, and Denai Massa, uh, who was actually celebrating the championship at that point um, on the last lap. Uh, before that, Schumacher and Damon Hill had an amazing finish in 1994 um, where they both wrecked, both retired. That was deemed a racing incident. That was actually a little bit analogous here where, where there was a decision to be made by the stewards about whether or not someone's going to win the championship. Obviously, Prost and... Um, and, and Nigel Mansell in 1988. Um, but this was amazing. Like this was this felt like fan service to me for having yes. watched the sport for so long. Where we're sitting around saying, "Oh man, can McLaren get into top four here?" Like that's what I've been doing. 
for four years. And now we get this. Like I was sitting, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I was sitting uh, on the couch. There's a guy just hammer, just literally just right outside my window, just ho- like holding his hand on, on a car horn. So there's a little, little, uh, little distraction here. Is it Botas? Um, it's Botas. <laughs> but like on the last lap, I don't know what happened. I was sitting on the couch. My wife was next to me. And when they started racing again, in the middle of the lap, I realized I had fallen off the couch and was just like on my knees on the carpet in the middle of my living room watching it because I, I had just like short circuited because of how exciting it was. Um, so I, I thought this this whole thing was amazing. Um, we should probably talk about Sergio Perez at some point being the ultimate uh, alpha teammate, but this was just unbelievable. <laughs> 